Coming up next on Rugby Wrap-Up, George Hook, Brian Ray, and Matt McCarthy talk Rugby World Cup. talking rugby in midtown manhattan and on the horn with us the great the legendary george hook from dublin and the all-star pundit of canada's punditry that's a that's a that's on the teleprompter don't blame me brian ray out of halifax of america's rugby news gentlemen george start with you george welcome yes thanks man thanks for having me and brian good to see you again my friend i know that you're getting ready to go to japan that's right. Starting to pack the bags. Getting close now to sushi. <laughs> you, you don't look. You don't look that excited. It's a lot of work to to get done between now and next week when I fly off. So uh, what do you need? Yeah, you need a couple really of baseball caps. You got your jersey on the back door there. <laughs> what do you need? What's the big deal? Uh, I got to study a little language that I don't understand at all. That might help. <laughs> they. I'll tell you what. They they really appreciate the effort for you speaking Japanese. Because then they realize how much better their English is, and they have the confidence to speak English to you. That that's a, that's a good thing, though. Guys, Steve Lewis is not here, but we have a stand-in for him, and uh, I'll get to the reason why he's dressed the way he is in in a moment. But we got a Rugby World Cup kicking off this weekend. Very exciting, George. What are your initial thoughts? Well, there's only three matches that are serious matchups. Uh, obviously, New Zealand, South Africa is the match of uh, the weekend. Then the Ireland-Scotland, which I think there are some very interesting things happening about the Ireland-Scotland game. All the other matches are predetermined results. Well, I've got my eye on Italy versus Namibia because of our friends Kia Slensing and Sergio Perese, who have been on the show. But aside from that, yeah, you're right. That is the headliner. Ryan, what what is uh, catching your eye once you awaken from your jet lagged slumber when you're over there? Yeah, I I agree with those. Uh, I, I I'm still curious to see how Fiji will do. You know, I'm not sure they'll have uh, you know the form to get past Australia in the first up, but uh, you know you never know with those guys. I hope they do. It'd be awesome to have a an amazing upset right off the bat, but uh, I think Australia might be a little bit better than those right now. France Argentina is the big question mark for me. Uh, I mean, obviously New Zealand South Africa, but France Argentina is is a very intriguing match for me because one of those teams could be missing from the quarterfinals, the one that loses. Yeah, these there are some great matchups, top notch matchups, uh, and let's get to those matchups. Let's get. To, I'm going to go through the the matches, and then we'll go to you guys, and you can tell me your picks. We got Japan hosting Russia. I think Japan's going to handle Russia pretty easily. What do you guys think, George? I, I mean, I'm not excited yet. Something better happen fairly quickly because I'm not excited about this tournament at all, and. Um, I I just I just don't there's nothing here that excites me the way eighty seven did or ninety one or going down to South Africa in ninety five, you know, um the fantastic matches in France. And uh, this doesn't excite me and I'm not sure why. I can't put my finger on it, but it's not there. And I think an example is the matchups. I mean, the Rugby World Cup was never meant to have this number of teams because there aren't the this number of teams who are who deserve to be there in 87 there were 16 teams and that's about right but when you think that only four teams have actually won the trophy in its history um, and there's only really six teams could win it then having all these teams in it really is fake and it's it's great, I'm sure, for Fiji or Tonga or, you know, uh, the Ivory Coast, as they were a number of years ago. But I mean, it, it doesn't it doesn't make the competition. It makes a mockery of it as a competition. I mean, for Brian to seriously suggest that Fiji um, are going to cause uh, Australia a moment's discomfort. I Sorry, Brian. I don't play that one. <laughs> 
<laughs> George, you have to forgive him. He's in the he's in New Scotland for Christ's sakes. So, so Brian, let's segue to you after you got slammed. Japan or over well, Russia? I, I would afford Fiji a little bit more respect than that, especially considering some of the uh, the recent result. We saw Samoa give uh, Australia a scare just a couple weeks ago, so I wouldn't write Fiji off yet. Yeah, you know, I'm excited for this tournament. I think there's a lot to be gained. Sure, there's only, you know, a handful of teams that can win that, but that's not the, really the whole point of the tournament for, for those of us, uh, you know, lower lights of the rugby world. We look forward to the spectacle of the whole thing, you know. Just, I mean, we've seen 15,000 people going to watch whales uh, at a practice. That's pretty an awesome sight uh, for me anyways, you know, and, and just to see, you know, our guys competing against the best in the world because we don't really get those chances uh, very often. Uh, you know, that's that's something different. Um, you know, coming up this weekend, as far as the opening game goes, Japan versus Russia, you know, J- Russia is lucky to even be at the tournament at all, given the circumstances. They probably shouldn't be. And Japan is the host side. Hey, they're, they're trying to crack the, the quarterfinals here. And um, so it's it's up to them to make kind of a statement running out of the gate and, and maybe show that, uh, you know, they're going to be able to give Scotland a scare in that last game in the, in the last weekend. All right. But let's get back to the question that you were supposed to answer that you didn't. Is Japan going to beat Russia? Oh, yeah, going away. I think they'll blow them out of the water by 40 points. Okay. All right. Fair enough. And I think Steve is, Steve's in agreement with us on that one. New Zealand versus South Africa. George? Well, I think South Africa are going to win the World Cup but lose to New Zealand. Um, that will not be a, a, a big blow because it will mean that they win, play the winners of the, the pool a and that's at the moment that's suggested to be ireland a loss to new zealand could put south africa on a pathway to a semi-final where the where their first serious match might take place i'm picking uh south africa in this one i'm, I'm thinking they're going to tip the apple cart i think they're primed Brian, what's your take on this one? I'm going to pick New Zealand um, for no particular reason. I just think they're going to start the tournament well. They've got a lot of weight in their shoulders, uh, and they're just a good team. I, I, I don't think there'll be much in it, though. Uh, I think it'll be a, a pretty close score. Uh, Steve's proxy uh, says that Steve is picking New Zealand as well. Let's go on to the next one. France, Argentina, George. I think France are going to win. I think Argentina aren't going to get out of the pool, uh, which is a shame because I have enormous regard for Argentinian rugby. But France are coming together. I really like the way France are looking. A great scrum half. And there are some smashing scrum halves in this tournament uh, which bear watching. Um, I think they'll have a big, solid pack, uh, which is always Argentina's strength. So they're going to, they're going to come up against another big pack. Um, and I just think France will have too much for them. I agree with you. I, I'm going with France in this one. They step it up a notch in World Cups, especially if they can find a villain in the administration or in the coaching staff. Since everybody's picking France, I better pick Argentina or else uh, Paul Tato get mad at me. Although I, I will do so reluctantly because I'm not entirely pleased with their uh, selections. And I agree, France has, uh, has, has looked a, li- a bit better in the buildups. Uh, so... You know, I, I'm leading toward Argentina, but uh, my brain is kind of screaming at me and saying France should win this. Australia and Fiji. I think you should just ask Brian, because like <laughs> anybody, like if anybody can talk for more than 90 seconds about this game be, being anything other than Australia, they are, in the words of the song, a cockeyed optimist. <laughs> I'm picking Australia to win this. One. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna pick uh, Fiji to upset Wales, though. I, I'm gonna pick Australia in this one. So and hold Tennessee on. Let's back. Let's back that up time. a second. Let's back that up a second. And you know, we'll get into Rob Howley's influence on Wales later. But you're you're saying that Fiji can knock off Wales and not knock off Australia? Yeah, I think uh, I think that first game uh, just might kind of rattle Fiji a little bit. They won't be quite prepared for the uh, the whole size of the event. I think that might uh, get under the skin. They might kind of try and look for that big hit and fall out of out of line in defense a couple times and, and leave holes for Australia to to exploit. Uh, they're not they're not quite as disciplined as as the other teams. But uh, we've seen in the past Wales have have been complacent against uh, uh, Fiji in the past. I don't you know necessarily think that Warren Gatlin's going to let them do that again. But 
I just have this uh, suspicion that Fiji are going to pull off some kind of uh, a result in this tournament. You are, you are nutsy cuckoo, my friend. Put down the Labatt's. <laughs> you, what are you drinking, Labatt's ice up there? All right, so guys, we're going to take a quick break. And then we'll come back with the rest of our picks right after this. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street. And we are back at Rugby Wrap-Up. George Hook out of Dublin, Brian Ray out of Halifax, and Steve Lewis not really here. He's here in, in spirit only. Guys, we left off with the... The Fiji match in which I am going to pick Australia as well, and I agree with George, is going to be a difference of at least 20 points. But then we've got one, Ireland versus Scotland. And we've got Ireland and Scotland represented right here in the Steve Lewis section. George, why don't you start with this one? I'm sure you got a few things to say. This game, it is suggested, might not take place because of the amount of rain that's going to fall there on Sunday. Uh, assuming it takes place, uh, there's going to be a ton of rain. Now, there is one team in the world who likes playing in the rain, and it's us. And the team that won't like playing the rain is actually Scotland because Scotland want to move the ball around and the rain isn't going to help. We don't want to move the ball around at all. I mean, if we could possibly play the game with just nine players and never pass the ball to number 10, we'd do it in, with the Joe Schmidt playbook. Now, the problem Schmidt has, interestingly, is he's, he, his two picks – uh, who are hurt, Henshaw and Carney. Henshaw in the centre, Carney at full back, would have been ideal rain players. Now, through a quirk of fate, he's got Larmer and Ringrose to come in, and I would have pilloried him for not picking him in the first place, but I wouldn't pick him in the rain. So the interesting thing is that I think the rain's going to help Ireland hugely, and therefore a game that I... This game will be very close. This is going to be very difficult if if the rain is true. Like if we're if we're talking about a monsoon, then it, you know you are not going to see too much flash rugby around the place. And there's nobody less likely to play flash rugby in this tournament than Ireland. We are the most boring team on the planet. That's that's but, that's a complete exaggeration. But go ahead. We beat Scotland. We beat Scotland. Okay. All right. You know, but but yeah, watching Ireland play rugby is like watching Formula One. It just keep going around in a circle all the time until eventually they get five yards in the line. They fall over it and they say, oh, ho, ho, a try. With the smell of gas. Brian, who are you picking in this one? Yeah, I don't have any argument there. Ireland will, will take this. I would pick them rain or shine. I'm just not super convinced with uh, Scotland heading into this tournament. Just uh, too inconsistent in form and too inconsistent with uh, selections. Uh, I think uh, Ireland will come through this one pretty uh, safely. You know, it'll be a contest. It always is. But uh, I don't have any hesitation picking Ireland. Now, if the game does get rained out, it's not replayed and it ends in a tie, right? Well, they're talk. There's talk of moving this. Uh, they, they were saying at the media press conference, which we could uh, access online here, that uh, they would make a decision six to eight hours before kickoff, uh, and they have kind of alternative venues picked out. So, you know, hopefully oh, this will go through whatever happens. But <laughs> last thing we want to see is, is a game like that uh, rained out. Although in the grand scheme of things, if this one gets rained out, you know, these two are probably going are going to be going through, well, probably going through to the uh, quarterfinals anyways. Oh, God. And you're just tailgating there six to eight hours ahead of time in the rain, which people will do, and then the game getting moved. That would be a disaster. Hope it doesn't yeah. happen. I got Ireland over Scotland by 15 points. 15 points. And I think they're going to show a little French flair, George, no matter what you say. I don't think they're as boring <laughs> as you make them to be, and they're certainly not the most boring team on the planet. There are plenty of boring teams out there. Is this one point, if I may? Yes, if absolutely. May, um, if there's a result, uh, I know it was one team wins, Ireland or Scotland, what Japan will do, and this I think is very important, Japan will then target the loser as opposed to target the winner. Because I don't, I think Japan reckon they can't beat both of them. So therefore Japan only want to beat one. 
and they will target the team that loses. And I think that's what they're going to do. All right, fair enough. Uh, we are based. We're running out of time, fellas, so we have to power through the rest of it. So fortunately, we have Italy versus Namibia, which we probably don't have a lot to talk about. Italy, no further conversation <laughs> required for this one. <laughs> George, yeah, let's go. I mean, this this. Uh, I mean, Sophia Loren and Gina Lodger Bridget are probably watching it. So I think they've got a good chance. They're going to hockey. They're going to hockey Namibia. Hockey you, them out of sight. And you got your man Conor O'Shea at the helm for Italy. My man Conor O'Shea. All right, and Steve Lewis is going to concur with us on that one. Uh, England, I'll start with this one. I say England is going to beat Tonga easily. George? Yeah. Brian? Yeah, no no arguments. Steve? Steve Steve uh, is, is improving in his silence. Uh, all right, and here's the last one. Wales and Georgia. And we know that Rob, that about the, all about the Rob Howley thing. George, do you think Rob Howley's uh, situation is going to hamper or help Wales? I, 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 anything like this in a, in a preparation for a World Cup has to be a disaster. So you have to start off by saying this is a disaster. Um, but he was leaving at the end of the of the tournament anyway. Uh, rumor has it go to Italy. But the but the thing is, so they were ready, you know, to carry on without him. It it, it looks as if they brought in Stephen Jones, the the former Wales fly half, and now I think the clinically goat, who was certainly one is a Gregor Townsend type of coach. Um, and I think he'd be very good for Wales. So unless there's a morale issue, and I don't know Howley's relationship with the team, but technically, I think it makes no difference to Wales. Yeah, our, our mad Welsh. By the way, how did you say, what, or how did, what did you refer to the Scarlet says? Clinically. But did you say goat after that? Clinically. Oh, I thought you said clinically goats. I was like, okay. No, 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 no. But I mean, that would have been I, bad. I, no, hold on, man. English is my second language. I'd be much more comfortable in the Gaelic. Or right, well, we can have, we can teach you American. We'll get you straightened out in a second. All right, I'm I'm going with uh, Wales, and and I have to give a nod to Johnny Lewis, our mad Welsh post production supervisor, who says the Howley news is a blessing in disguise for Wales. Because the Wales attack has been poor under him, and Stephen Jones of Scarlets is great at this, but it might be too short a notice for him to have his, his impact made. Steve is agreeing with us on Wales. Final thoughts, gentlemen, after this rousing segment picking these matches. What do you want to know now, kid? But I tell you this much in the 2007. <laughs> I was in Paris, and Georgia gave Ireland the fright of their lives. So unless Wales are on cue, uh, Georgia are going to be difficult. I think Wales are going to win. But, I mean, I thought Ireland won too. But, but I mean, only in, 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 by the nip and tuck. So Wales have to be careful here. Uh, Brian, final thoughts. <laughs> yeah, Wales should uh, have no trouble really with. Oh well, I mean, I shouldn't say no trouble. Georgia are always a, a difficult side to play against, but Wales will beat them. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it's going to be uh, an exciting uh, opening to this tournament. Nice to see New Zealand and South Africa right off the bat get that over with. But on the other hand, that kind of uh, that's the only real pool match of of that one, of Pool B. That's kind of interesting. After that, it's all downhill. So, uh, but I will say. The next week, we finally get the North American sides coming in. Canada and USA are the two uh, contenders <laughs> to, yeah. for the title, baby. That's maybe right, not. baby. That's right. I'm with you 100% on that. And and, uh, and final note for me on this one. I think the excitement, George, that you were talking about is something that will be felt on the ground because the people of Jap Japan, who are actually a respectfully quiet uh, group of people at these sporting events, are really excited about this thing. And the buzz from them alone will feed this tournament. And I think it'll translate through the television sets across the globe. On that note, we are out of time, my friends. But I want to thank you both for coming on. I want to thank Mr. George Hook calling in from Dublin. Mr. Brian Ray on his way to meet Ryan Ginty of Next Level Rugby in Japan. who He's there already. Safe travels, my friend. And, I'm, and of course, Steve Lewis, who is coaching Army 
because he's going to the World Cup, so he can't miss any practices in the meantime. So on behalf of these three gentlemen, I'm Matt McCarthy for Rugby Wrap-Up in Midtown Manhattan talking Rugby World Cup Rugby, signing off.